Armando Hasuringan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasuringan. In this video we're going to talk about MHC class 2 processing or major histocompatibility complex class 2 processing. Now MHC class 2, it's expressed only by antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells, B cells and macrophages. Now the MHC class 2 will have an antigen on it and will present it to a naive CD4 T cell. Let's look at the process uh, in an overview. So this here is a cell. Here is the extracellular fluid and here is the intracellular fluid of the cell. This cell can only be an antigen presenting cell. So let's just say it's a macrophage. Now within the extracellular fluid, there can be pathogens, such as a bacteria here. The macrophage, knowing that this is a pathogen, will engulf the pathogen, the bacteria, through a process called phagocytosis. Let's stop there for a moment and see what we can find in this cell. So within the cell, uh, this is not a mitochondria, it's actually an endoplasmic reticulum, a rough endoplasmic reticulum, where we can find ribosomes and where protein packing occurs. So here we have the endoplasmic reticulum, here we have the Golgi apparatus, and most importantly for MHC class II uh, processing, we have ly lysosomes. Now the lysosomes contains acids, and so within it is an acidic environment. Now back to the bacteria, now back to the bacteria that was phagocytized, the antigen presenting cell, the macrophage, will destroy this bacteria by allowing the fusion of both the lysosome and the phagosome, like so. And this will form what's called the phagolysosome, which, is, uh, which has an acidic environment, about pH of 4, and this is due to the lysosome. And because of the acidic environment, this will cause the content being the bacteria to break down, leaving various bacterial peptides or antigens here. Now within the endoplasmic reticulum, the ribosomes are synthesizing MHC class 2 molecule, molecules. The MHC class 2 um, is made up of alpha 1 and 2 domains and beta 1 and 2. The alpha portion is about 35 kilodaltons in mass and the beta is about 23 kilodaltons. The MHC class 2 will have other pro another protein interacting with it as soon as it is synthesized. This protein is called II protein, better called actually, the, I think it's the CD74, which will prevent endoplasmic reticulum proteins from binding onto the MHC class 2 groove. So it will prevent these sort of peptides from binding onto the groove here. The II structure protein also acts as a chaperone, bringing the MHC class 2 out from the endoplasmic reticulum in an endosome, then through the Golgi apparatus, and forming a new endosome. This new endosome is slightly acidic. The acidified endosome actually degrades the II protein, leaving a fragment called clip on the binding site or the groove of the MHC class 2, thus allowing no peptides or antigens to bind onto MHC class 2. Following this, another protein called HLADM will interact with MHC class 2, releasing clip from the binding groove. The phagolysosomes uh, containing bacterial peptides will then fuse with the MHC class 2 endosome and this will allow the peptides to bind onto the groove of the MHC class 2. However, only a specific peptide, specific antigen is able to bind onto the groove of the MHC class 2 and this is for any MHC class 2 because it's all unique. So after a specific antigen will bind onto the groove of the MHC class 2, like so, the macrophage with, uh, which is an antigen-presenting uh, cell, 
will express it on its cell surface. So here, this is MHC class 2 with an antigen. The MHC class 2 is expressed and will wait interaction with a naive CD4 T cell. The naive CD4 T cell is MHC class 2 restricted, which means that it requires interaction with an MHC class 2 molecule to become activated, basically. When the naive CD4 T cell becomes activated, it will become a T helper cell. And this is very important in promoting the immune response. So let's see what sort of interaction occurs between the antigen presenting cell and the naive CD4 T cell. So here I'm drawing up the cell membrane of a naive CD4 T cell, which will which essentially is a T helper, a naive T helper cell. What first happens is that a receptor called CD4 receptor, hence it's a CD4 T cell, will check the MHC molecule. It will check if the MHC being expressed is an MHC class 2. Because CD4 receptor only interacts or recognizes MHC class 2. Now, the CD4 receptor is made up of segments D1, D2, D3, and D4. It will actually bind onto the alpha portion of the MHC class 2. If that's okay, the T cell receptor, TCR, will then check the antigen. Now, the T cell receptor's binding groove also um, it only fits to specific antigens as well. So let's just say in this case, the TCR can fit to this antigen being presented by the MHC class 2. So if the CD4 uh, receptor will uh, check the MHC class 2 and confirms it, and the TCR checks the antigen and confirms it, this will trigger a cascade of events within the naive CD4 T cell. The signal transduction, the cascade, will eventually lead to the activation of the naive CD4 T cell to become a T helper cell. And so this T helper cell can then promote the immune response by uh, activating B cells, for example, or other things. Of course, it's not that simple, this activation process. In order to activate the CD4 T cell, naive CD4 T cell, other receptors such as B7 has to bind to another receptor, as well as those release of cytokines. But that's too much detail. I hope you understood the basics of this. Uh, thank you for watching.